Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider ye, and call for the morning women, that they may come, and send for cunning women, that they may come. And let them make haste, and take up a waiting for us, that our eyes may run down with tears, and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of waiting is heard out of Zion. How are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded because we have forsaken the land because our dwellings have cast us out. Yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters well and every one of her neighbors Lamentations for death has come up into our windows and has entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. Finally, he says this in verse 22 Speak, thus said the Lord, yeah. even the carcasses of men shall fall as dung upon the open field. And as the handful after the harvestmen, and none shall gather them. Amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning from this thought what will become of our tears? Amen. What will become of our tears? Why are we here? You ever ask that question, why are we here? Hmm. And not only why are we here, but how did we get here? Yes. You know, every once in a while, the world reminds us just how frail mankind really is. Yes. But the old saying somehow comes true. Together we will stand yes. and divide and reform. Amen. So why are we here? You ever ask yourself the question, why am I here? Yes. Well, we we got to this point. Our country has gotten to this point, maybe because we have ignored for so many years what is really true. Not only that, we can no longer, it can no longer be business as usual. Right. And then we can't have a business as usual mentality. And then in spite of all that has transpired within the past month, there are still some people who believe that the system ain't broke. Yeah, but here in the ninth chapter of Jeremiah, God is still speaking. And even today in these times, he's still speaking. But I want to just share this with you. Now is not the time to lose sight, nor is it the time to lose hope. Right. When times are like they are, and I don't get me wrong, these are some difficult times we're living in. Even Dr. King said it almost 50 years ago, we got some difficult days up ahead. Yes, sir. But when, 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 when times are as they are now, watch this, there has always been a people who prayed. It was about four years ago when uh, this country went into an uproar over Kaepernick taking a knee at a game. It's been four years, and, and do you not understand that four years later, that, that, that knee, people still talk about that knee, but that ain't the knee we need to be talking about. Say it, Pastor. God, here in the ninth chapter of Jeremiah, he he sends for the women 
who would mourn during difficult times. I don't know about you, but when I look at the time, sometimes it makes me cry. Yes, sir. Yeah. When I look at how systematic racism is at the top of many people's agenda, it, it sometimes I find my eyes welling up with tears. God says, send for the women who mourn. Verse 18, many, many tears have been shed. And I was asked not too long ago by a younger person, why do we cry? Why do we cry? Well, we cry when it becomes personal. Right. We cry when we hear the faint cry of someone keep on telling us, I can't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. We cry when it becomes us and ours. The world cries. And I found over the past three weeks that nobody is exempt from crying. Right. And then I, I want you to understand something else. Not only do we cry because it's personal, but we cry because it hurts. Yes. We cry because maybe our tears will motivate a movement. Yes. Jeremiah warns the people that death has come, and through our windows it has come, and it has claimed houses. He says in verse 21, the dead bodies are everywhere right. and have scattered the landscape. So, the women mourn for their babies and all those that have lost their lives. So much death that it would resemble cut grain that had been left in the fields by the reaper. Yes, yes. When I look around, not only as we had looked in the, the movement and all the things that transpired uh, with Brother Floyd, when I look at how diverse the crowd was and how the crowd came together, but here we are after the fact, we are still scattered. So, in the biblical days, nations would be destroyed and decimated by doing two things. Killing off the males, and destroying the babies. Mm. It's not a day go by. I don't pray for this country, this, this pandemic. But finally, verse 22, y'all, is a wake up call to our nation. And uh, while we are continually asking our nation to wake up, many people are still asleep. Yes, Lord. I'm reminded over in, I think it's 137 number of psalms where the psalmist says, it is by the rivers of Babylon that we wept. Isn't it amazing that our people have been crying a long time? Yes. We just didn't start crying the other day for justice. We've been crying for a long time. But they say it is by the rivers of Babylon that we sat and we, we wept. And they, they find themselves crying for two reasons. They cry because of where they are. And then they cry from where they come from. They're so good at what they do that they are ridiculed by their captors. They are so good at what they do, they are ridiculed even as slaves. They want them to shine in captivity and put on a show in Babylon. But 
the question somehow it resonates in our spirit even today. How can we sing the Lord's songs in a strange land? Seems as though as the days go by, the stranger this land becomes. You know we're living in a strange land. When a man would buy dog food before he'd buy baby food. We're living in a strange land. When we lock up our dogs, but let our kids run around loose. Mm. And it seems that the more we try to bring ourselves together, the stranger the land gets. Yeah. Brother Kaepernick was crucified mm. because he took a knee. But then that ain't the knee we need to be focusing on. That's right. Amen. But while we're here in my closing, the old people used to say we cannot rest on our morals. In other words, we can't become so satisfied with what one has already achieved that we feel it's no further a need to improve what we have. I got to ask you this question in my closing. Yeah, we, we, we make strides. I hear it all the time. Well, we make strides. But if we rest on our laurels, some will think we got it made. Mm. But can I ask you a question? Go ahead, Pastor. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Why settle for less mm. when more is right there in front of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's next? Well, what do you do when you're all pried out? Mm. What's next? Well, we need godly intervention. Yeah. We need God to hear our prayer from our mouth to his ears. We need God to see our tears. Yes. We've cried long enough. And we've cried for our souls and we've cried for our livelihoods. I want this country to see our tears. But let me just say this again. Your tears are just a temporary release of the pain, sorrow, and grief. But the Bible tells us if you read it in the end, we won't have to cry no more. Yes, yes. The pain that we have endured for 400 years eventually is going to come to an end. Yes, sir. So we call upon you to pray for a better place. Yes. And as the old people used to say, if you have to cry, then cry. Yes. Because it is our release. Yes. But we don't cry at those who have no hope. All right. The tides of life are changing. Yes. yes, sir. And I thank God for your continued prayers. And this too, in the midst of all of this, I know that a change is going to come. Yes, sir. Come on, let's bow our heads. God, we thank you now and we love you so much because some of us have cried until there are no more tears. But I do believe that you you sit high and you look down upon us. Lord. And I know that you're not asleep and you're still in control. And so we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. And then, Lord, sometimes trouble in my way. Yeah. I have to cry sometimes. Yes, yeah, sir. I know that there are some cosigners right now that simply can cosign by saying that I lay awake at night. Yes, yeah. Lord. But that's all right. Mm -hmm. I know that you're going to fix it yeah. in your own time. Yes. Yeah. So we love you. Thank you so much. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, say amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again on next Sunday. Y'all stay blessed and be blessed in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much.
So I want to thank you so much for uh, joining in and listening to us on Sunday mornings. And thank you for uh, just being supportive. Uh, please don't forget, uh, you can go to our website at www.nbbwe.org, where they have names on there that you, and numbers that you can call and uh, give you a blessing. And I, I cannot thank you enough for all of you that have continued to give in spite of us not even being able to assemble as a congregation. It speaks volumes as to your love for God and your growth. Again, we thank you so much, and we'll see you again on uh, next Sunday. May God bless you, and my God keep you. We love you. We love you. We love you. See you soon.